going on YouTube? This is Dark Light Dreamer coming into another Q&A video. Finally, I know, I know guys, it's been what, like a month since I've done a Q&A video? I'm so, so sorry about that. And I know my upload schedule has just been everywhere, or, you know, upload one video in one week and two videos in another week and one video in another week, and I'm so, so sorry, but this month has been absolutely crazy. Let me, let me tell you guys about all the crazy stuff that has happened this month. First of all, let's think back a month ago to Hurricane Harvey. I didn't really record, like, at all that week because I wanted to wait until the end of the storm because I didn't want to run into a situation where, you know, I would be reporting and the power would flicker out. There was just so much raining and so much flooding. I felt like the power would just shut off at any time and I didn't want to get into a situation where I'd be in the middle of recording and have to start completely the fuck over so that way um, I could get a video out for you guys. So I just put recording on hold that week. Also during that week I was getting moved into the new place and that, you know, was just a big effort to get everything moved and I didn't want to be recording videos kind of trying to get everything you know hurry up and get everything set back up and everything so I want to be able to take a little bit of time to get everything set up the way I needed to I know that the camera angle and stuff like that and some of the videos after that was kind of off because I'm still I was still trying to figure out how to set everything up in the new setup but everything should be good now hopefully for you guys um also right after the hurricane was over my work was just insane. I worked 90 hours in one week right after the hurricane because uh, the store was closed and everybody shopped everything right before the store closed and the, the shelves were just completely blown and we had to get the store caught back up to standard and it was just an absolutely insane week at work. I would come home exhausted. I would definitely would not want to record after coming home that tired. I, I would not think feel like I would have been able to bring you guys a very good video after that, but uh, there was that. Also, there was the fact of, you know, after I moved, I was still getting adjusted to sleeping in the new place. I know that's a little bit weird, but for two weeks when I moved, I didn't have a bed of my own. So for two weeks, I had to sleep on an air mattress. So that was not the most comfortable thing in the world. I didn't get a great sleep on that. And uh, when I finally did get a new bed, I got a great new bed, by the way. It's costing me a little bit of money, but I, I got a great new bed, and it's really comfortable. But I don't know if you guys have this experience, and whenever you sleep in a new bed, no matter how comfortable it is, it takes some adjusting to sleeping in it. So uh, it took a little bit of adjusting to sleeping, and uh, I would not be able to sleep very well in it, so I'd still be really tired. Yeah, that was... Uh, but I can sleep great in it now. It's a great bed. I really appreciate uh, the fact that I'm able to sleep in a bed now, period. And on top of everything else, guys, one really, really huge thing that's come into my life lately that I know has been taking up a lot of time and attention is the fact that I've been in a new relationship lately, and I really, really was not expecting to be in, the, in any time in the near future. I had already kind of resigned to the fact that I was going to be alone for quite a while, and I put my focus 100% on YouTube, and I'm like, I'm going to put everything I have into it and put out four videos plus a week. I'm going to put out more videos whenever I move into the new place, and it's just going to be great, 100% gung-ho. So this is something completely unexpected that's come into my life, and it's been absolutely wonderful. I, all I want to do is talk to this girl. She's absolutely amazing, and she's, she's smart, guys. She is funny in a way that is compatible with my sense of humor. She's one of the kindest people that I know. She's a driven person. She's absolutely beautiful, and she's amazing. She's done through so many things in her life, and I honestly just want to spend all of my time talking to her and spending time with her, giving the relationship the proper attention that it, that it needs, that it deserves. So um, in life, I know that priorities tend to shift. And while before this came into my life, I was putting my attention pretty much 100% on YouTube, 100% on you guys, um, I really need to, to spend the time it needs to focus on this relationship. So um, I'm actually going to be cutting back on the amount of videos that I do. I, I was doing trying to do four videos a week, now I'm gonna cut back to three. I'm gonna try to do Monday, Wednesday, and Friday as my upload schedule. And um, so that way I can basically focus on more important things in my life because this girl is really, really important to me and I just wanna make sure I do everything right and give the attention it deserves. So I really, really appreciate you guys for, uh, for understanding you know, when it comes to that. 
As far as uploads go, henceforth in the month of October, I'm kind of planning to do a little hiatus from my normal uploads, meaning Observer, meaning Ori in the Blind Forest, and focusing on some really scary Let's Plays and getting some jump scares in for you guys. So what I want to do is do some uh, some one-off scary games, some of them in which, of which in, are in VR. So that's really going to scare the shit out of me. Uh, I'm going to revisit some old games that I know scared the shit out of me, like Sophie's Curse. I know I want to revisit Slender because it was literally the first jump scare game that really got me. The first time I played Slender, I jumped out of my chair and like threw my headphones at the desk. <laughs> it's absolutely insane. And I have some other horror Let's Plays planned for you guys, but if you guys are cool with that, let me know down in the comment section below. If you're not cool with that, let me know in the comment section below. Like, we need Ori the Blind Forest, and it's an amazing game. I'm loving playing that game. And I really need to get through Observer at some point, because uh, Home Sweet Home is out. So, Home Sweet Home is going to be the game that I play right after I'm done with Observer. So... If you guys uh, want me to, to continue doing that, let me know down in the comment section below. I really want to make sure that I'm playing the guy, the games, the, the, playing the guys, playing the games that you guys want to see. So I think that's all the things that I have to catch you guys up on today. But you guys are here for that. What you guys are here for is to hear some of the answers I have to some of the questions that you guys asked me in the Q&A Friday video that I posted up a month ago. So let's get right into the questions. Tyler does YT says you're doing good, bro. Keep up the good work. Thank you very much, man. I really, really appreciate your support. Thank you so much for continuing to watch. Uh, Alonzo the gamer says glad you're doing great, bro. Thank you very much, man. I really, really appreciate it. He says question: Goku or Superman? It begins, bro. You know I gotta go with my boy Goku, okay? I think compared to Superman, I think Goku is definitely, he's a better trained fighter. Superman isn't really a trained fighter. He just kind of brawls and he uses his his powers to his benefit, but he just kind of like really heavily punches and he's not trained at fighting. Goku knows how to fight. He's got the speed. I think his power level is gonna be way higher than Superman's. It's just, I think no question, definitely Goku would win against Superman. I think even the Goku versus Superman little video that came out, out, they use the fact that Goku is a, is a more merciful person and wouldn't go all out against Goku and he wants it to be a fair fight all the time. But I mean, I, I think if they were going all out against each other, definitely Goku. Richard from the Nerd Life says, Mr. Face Buddy, thanks very much, man. It's really, really great to be back. He says, do you watch Death Note? And if so, have you watched the live action Netflix movie? I do watch Death Note and I have watched the live action Netflix movie. I honestly was not impressed really at all by the live action Netflix movie. Uh, I just, I didn't like how a lot of the characters were acted. There's just very different from the original ones. I do think that Rook was done really, really well. Like they perfectly, I think they re they represented Rook. But what I liked about the original anime series is that there's a lot of intrigue in the original series. A lot of uh, Kira trying to figure out how to get people's names and Kira and L trying to outsmart each other and everything like that. And I felt like a lot of the things I loved about the original series just were not present in the movie. So unfortunately, I wasn't a big fan of that. He says, Rose wanted to know if you were a cat or dog guy. Yes. Yes. I love cats and I love dogs for different reasons. I love animals in general. I think if I had to pick one, I'd say I'm more of a dog person just because of their like love and never ending affection and you know they're always just so happy to come to see you when you come home and everything. Uh, they're a little bit more high maintenance than cats, however, and cats can kind of just do whatever they need to do by themselves except feed themselves really and you know, all you gotta do is change your litter box. But uh, I love having a dog around. So I'm both, I guess. Uh, Sophia asked if you played if you would play Slime Rancher. I have not seen a lot about the game. I'll definitely look into it. What I've seen about seen about it looks good. I mean, I'd definitely check it out. Um, she says, and would I skate? I, I used to skate all the time. I'm not the most coordinated person in the world. Uh, I do tend to fall over on my butt a lot just because I'm not really good with the skating. But I don't know. I used to do it all the time in North Carolina. I was better at it then. I had a lot of practice, but I just had it sit for how many years now? Like. Uh, it has to be, like, almost 20 years since I put skates on, so, yeah, it's it's been a while. He also says that Ava asked if you missed her and if you are okay. She was constantly glued to the Harvey News, worried about you. You guys don't have to worry about me at all. Thank you guys very much for being concerned, but we really didn't get any damage to the house, and we weren't flooded, and we didn't even lose power for more than a few hours. Everything is completely recovered since then, and everything is great, so don't worry at all, guys. Uh, and of course I miss my little bestie. She is the best little fan in the entire 
entire world, and thank all of you for all of your awesome questions. Pricey Anna says, love your energy and your background. Thank you very, very much. I'm a really big fan of anime, as you guys can see, and Fate Zero, or the Fate series in general, is definitely my favorite anime series in the world. Next to it, you guys can see Sailor Mercury, because Sailor Mercury was like one of my first anime crushes, so definitely a big fan of Sailor Mercury. I'd have wall scrolls all over, and I have more anime and video game artwork that I want to hang up, but I want to get, like, frames for it, so that way I don't just stick the, the art to the wall and ruin the paper. So anyway, thank you very much, Anna. Itic Beer 40 k says, Great episode, my friend. It's all happening there for you. Hope all stays well. Thank you very much, man. He says, Have you had a look at Warhammer 40k 8th edition? Any games yet and temptations to start playing again with your Eldar? I have not looked really hard into 8th edition. I have not gotten in any games of 8th edition yet. As, as you know, I do enjoy playing Warhammer 40k. I just can't really squeeze it into the limited amount of time I have in my life. As much as I would like to, you know, it's just there's a lot to the hobby of Warhammer 40k. And I just don't have the room to squeeze it in, especially now that I'm squeezing more things into my life. So I'm really, really sorry about that, Nick. Kuja and Kiwi from Kuja and Kiwi says, And my question for you is, what in your opinion is the best trophy and achievement that you have got? Definitely, I would have to say the Platinum Trophy in Disgaea 3. Yes, completing 100% any Disgaea game is a huge achievement, and to do all the, to get all the trophies for that was ridiculous. It took literal months of just straight up like grinding and dedication to get this trophy. This guy is a ridiculous series, guys. I don't know if you've played it, but like the level cap is 9,999, not just 99, 9,999. And you can get their stats in like the billions and whatnot. And then on top of that, there's reincarnation, where not only do you max out, but you go back to level one and re-level and go back to level one and re-level. And every time you reincarnate, um, you you keep a portion of your stats. So every time you reincarnate and level back up, you get stronger. And then there's the process, the, a long process of getting all the best items in the game and really like decking out your characters. It took months, and then. You know, going through item world, going to the floor 100, making sure to get all the different pirates that can randomly spawn in, in different item worlds. It took a long time to get that trophy. I am super, super proud of my Disgaea 3 trophy. So yeah, that's definitely, I think, the best trophy I've gotten so far. So thank you guys very, very much for your question. James says, glad to hear you're safe after Hurricane Harvey, man, and the new place looks awesome. Thank you very much, man. I really, really appreciate that. Yeah, as you guys can see, everything is perfectly fine, and the new place is definitely a big upgrade from that tiny apartment that I lived in before. He says, I can also relate to your mental health as I suffer from those negative thoughts myself. To be completely honest, I wish that you didn't relate to me. I wish that you didn't have to suffer through the same kinds of demons that I have to go through on a regular basis. I really don't wish that kind of thing on anybody. And But for obvious reasons for me, it's been a lot, lot better because um, the girl that I've been with has been really helping out my, my mental state. She really brings out the best in me and makes me feel good about just being who I am. She's been a huge positive force in my life and I haven't had a lot of negative thoughts really ever since we started talking. So uh, it's, it's really, really wonderful. I know that those thoughts and feelings are never gonna go away completely. I mean, they're just not, There's it's, it's an illness and uh, I'm gonna have to suffer through it for my entire life. But right now, I'm in a really good place mentally and spiritually, and I just wanna hold on to that feeling as long as possible. And I know that sometimes it feels like you have to go through these thoughts and these feelings alone, and you totally don't. If you ever need anybody to talk to about these kinds of things, or even if you just need to vent out what you're thinking or what you're feeling to somebody, just, just let me know. I'll be happy to hear you out, man. Uh, he says, I actually have two questions for you this time around. I mentioned about your, or you mentioned about your new perler hobby, hope I'm spelling that right, which you actually did. Uh, could you explain the process behind that? Also, Mog is one of my favorite FF characters, so it looked awesome. I'm really, really glad that you liked it. But yeah, I can totally explain the process behind that. So the first thing that you need to do is get a general idea, general idea, of what you want to make for your perler project. So you need to find an image to base that project off of. And the more pixelized the image is to begin with, the better, because if it's not pixelized already, you need to pixelize it and then grid it out because basically you want every pixel to be only one color and then you want to you want to get it mapped out using GIMP or Photoshop so that way you know how to arrange it on these perler boards. So 
Um, once you've ordered all the different colors of beads that you need based off of the image that you have, you can get it on the, the Perler website, or you can get it on eBay or Amazon or whatever. Um, so you get these boards and you arrange these colored beads on the boards by copying the image so you just like have, a lot of times you just have to count like okay uh three blues across then three pixels of blank space then three more blues and whatever so using that image as a guide you arrange the beads on here until you've copied the, the image completely and you've made a whole um the whole piece of art using it but getting it on the board is only the first step then you have to iron it together so, once it's on the board, there are a couple things that you can do once the image is completely mapped out. You can either put parchment paper on it and iron it on high heat on the board directly because, you know, that will basically, all you have to do is iron it, pull it off, and done. Um, as, you, as you can see, I did a similar thing for this Nightwing symbol. I made this for Wolf Brother Mythos. So basically, as you guys can see, I just pulled up the Nightwing symbol on Google. I saved it, downloaded it. I put it through GIMP and pixelized it and then mapped it out to where every pixel was one color. This, bl this black and this blue. So I ordered this blue for the Nightwing symbol. Actually, I think I already had this color laying around and then just mapped it out according to the image. And then I just put parchment paper on it or I could have just put parchment paper on it and ironed it. However, in order to save my boards, because one other thing you can do, it's a little bit more advanced, these boards are plastic. So when you have a really hot iron near it, these will warp eventually. So I basically saved that method for more complex images like this Spyro that you see here or here, um, which I actually made for my girlfriend. It came out really well, but I had to actually scrap it the first time I made it because uh, I tried to pull it off with masking tape and it just, because it was such a complex image, it didn't want to pull off correctly. So. I just decided to, to risk it and iron it on the boards. But another method that you can utilize is you take masking tape and you cut off strips of masking tape and you press it gently on the beads and then like rub down on it with, uh, with another object like a battery or, or something like that. Something that you can just kind of rub it down on the beads to make sure they all stick perfectly to the, to the masking tape, it's a lot more difficult than you would think, especially on a really complex image with a lot of nooks and crannies like that spiral image. But um, basically, um, when you pull it off of the board and then you put the parchment paper on the mapped out um, image on the board, on the masking tape, and you iron it from there so that way you don't have heat near your board so that way you can save them. Um, that's basically the whole thing. You just wait for it to, to cool down a little bit after you've ironed it together and make sure everything is adhesed. You want to start from the outside edge to make sure that everything stays in place and then kind of focus on the middle after that. And you let it cool, you turn it, turn it around, you iron it some more. It's going to curl as you see here. So the way you can, what you can do about that is you put something heavy and flat on it to flatten it out. It might start curling over time again, so you just put it under something flat and heavy, books or something like that, to, to, to keep it flat. I need to put more pressure on this one, sorry about that mythos. But anyway, yeah, that's basically how you do a Perler project. It's pretty inexpensive to get into, it's not that hard to get into, and you can do a lot creatively with it. So yeah, I'm, I'm really enjoying that so far. His second question is, I've been thinking about what anime I could watch, if you have any suggestions, it would be brilliant. So as you have heard me say over and over again in my Q&A series, I love the Fate series. I would definitely start with Fate Stay Night, the original, and then watch Fate Zero, which is the prequel to that, and then watch Fate Stay Night Unlimited, Unlimited Blade Works. That's really hard to say for me for some reason, but it's basically parallel to the, the original series. It's just a branching path, so it's a bit of a different story than the original one, and it's done by Ufotable, which is a different company. It's the same company that did Fate, did Fate Zero, but it's different than the original Fate Stay Night series and the animation quality is just way better and it's a lot more action packed they really focus a lot on the action there so they are able to tell the story in a much more grandiose way and it's really really awesome so i would definitely watch those series in that order um there are a couple other fate series uh, coming out right now there's fate apocrypha which is kind of a different side story <laughs> excuse me that's uh, that's uh, still running i think in in japan and i'm just kind of downloading it on on the interwebs completely legally. There's also Gungrave, but if you watch that series, here's just my opinion. 
If you watch that series, avoid reading any of the box information about it, avoid reading anything online about it, and then, like, just skip the first episode. Because what this series does is, they take one of the most brilliant and most awesomely done twists in anime, and then they just ruin it in the first episode, because what they do is, the first episode, it do you don't have to watch it at all, because what happens is, it, ha it takes place way, way later in the story, and tells you the big twist, all like, right away, and then, at the beginning of episode two, it goes back to the beginning of the story and starts to tell you the story. It's like, how it got to that point. So, I don't want people to watch the first episode of Gungrave, so that way, when the twist happens, it's like, oh my god, I didn't see that coming! Instead of you knowing and expecting it the whole time. I just think it gives a much better feel to the series. So yeah, watch Gungrave starting from episode 2. Don't read anything else about it. Um, I'm really enjoying uh, Guilty Crown. I've, I've watched it before. It's a relatively newer series. I think it's only a few years old. Um, that one's really good. Soul Eater is really, really good. Uh, Bubblegum Prices Tokyo 2040 is really, really good. Um, if you like drama, Clannad and Canon and Angel Beats are all really good. I love a good slice of life anime, and those three are definitely really good. Like, it gives you all the funny, and makes you laugh a lot, and it makes you cry a lot, and, you know, a lot of awe moments because there are a lot of sweet moments in there. If you can find it, Generator Gall is a really, really good series. If you like Persona, the Persona 4 animation is actually really, really brilliantly done. Uh, let's see, there's also um, Orphan. Oh, it's definitely one of my favorite series, the first season anyway. Oh, and actually one that I more recently got into that is really, really amazing is called Beyond the Boundary. I watched it last year, and it was absolutely amazing. I really need to buy that box set, but it, it makes you feel, feel really good. It has a really good ending, and it, there's a lot of action in it and it's just you really connect with the characters a lot and it has a lot of really funny moments as well in there so I really recommend Beyond the Boundary it's a really great series so yeah that's a that's a few different animes that I would recommend I definitely have a lot more animes that I could recommend to you if you like any of those so let me know what you want to see or what kind of animes that you like and I'll try to recommend you more specific ones in the future so thank you very much for your questions James Cornpuff asked a question this week. She says, question, if you were given $2 million but can only give it away, meaning none of it can go back to you, at least not on purpose, how would you disperse the money? Well, first of all, family is really important to me and I'd want to make sure that my family was comfortable and well taken care of, even if none of it could come back to me. I would want to make sure that uh, they could provide for their families and everything, so I'd probably give a good three quarters of my money to my family so that way they can live comfortably and the people that I love. Um, the other 500000 I would probably give to charity. Uh, I'd probably divide that in half. 250000 probably go to the cause of feeding the hungry and, the, and sheltering the homeless. And for the other $250,000, what I'd probably try to do, and this is actually a cause that I would love to donate to in the future if I'm able to do, to do a charity live stream or anything like that, is to find a cause that helps victims of child abuse, helps them get out of their situations or helps them once they have gotten out of their situations, uh, provides them the, the support that they need, uh, because, I mean, that's something that really is near and dear to my heart because I had to suffer through a lot of child abuse when I was young and I, I know a lot of people, several people that were victims of that a lot when they were growing up and it's really affected them in their adult life. So um, it, it's a cause that's really important to me, uh, getting people out of these terrible situations and um, uh, that's probably a cause I would definitely want to donate to. So anyway, yeah, I think that's how I would distribute $2 million if I was given that. So thank you very much for your question, Pornpa. And I think that's all the questions that you guys had for me this week. If you guys have any more questions, please, please do not hesitate to drop those questions down in the comment section below. I'll get to answering those questions in the next Q&A Friday video. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and continuing to support me and, and ask me my questions. I really, really appreciate it, and I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please do me a huge favor and share this video with your friends. The exposure really, really helps me out a lot. Do you remember, drop some comments too, even if they're questions. I just love hearing from you guys. I just love chatting with you guys. It really and truly makes my day. And if you haven't that subscribe button yet, you guys know that I'd love to have you guys as a member of the Dark Light family. And we'll continue this YouTube journey together again very, very soon. And until then, may your dreams at your darkest hour, and I'll see you next time.